Here we are then in Silver Springs, Florida, having a walk around the uh, beautiful parkland. You can hear a thunderstorm coming up behind us. I think we'll have to make our way fairly soon because there's a lot of lightning there and I think one great big rain cloud heading our way. But hopefully I'm going to link this filming with some painting that I'm going to do here in Florida with the work I did in Savannah a few years ago. Pure watercolour. Um, I'm going to show you how to use water with pastels. I'm going to show you how to use pastels over water and how to look at um, painting and drawing horses both in pure watercolour, mixed medium and using stick and ink and mixed medium to get a very fast flowing, lively working picture. Giving the paper a quick coat of acrylic ink is very easy and of course in these sort of conditions it dries very quickly and you're almost ready to work instantly. Now we're going to take on some of the marshland here, some of the more swampy areas where the water's worked up in amongst woodland. We're only going to need two brushes for this, an oval mop and a single round number eight. Uh, I'm going to draw it out roughly first, then work up the watercolour and all my deeper tones and mid-tones and then put the light and the very darks in with pastel afterwards using water with the pastel as well. So we'll really show how versatile Americans are very aware of their past history and crafts and not only is hunting, shooting and fishing still continued uh, and thoroughly enjoyed, they are very aware of conservation. In this case, live ones, in just walking through the local parks, these are animals that we can see from day to day in broad daylight an armadillo, burrowing away for grubs and uh, ants right in front of us. The variety of butterflies is absolutely incredible and apparently you look at about three seasons of late spring, midsummer and late summer. Um, these swallowtails now out in midsummer. But as night draws on, You'll be a very strong person if you can walk through the woodlands at night and not feel the hairs in the back of your head prickling a little because all of these furry little animals and scaly ones are creeping about there doing their yeah. nightly business. Such a unique ecosystem because you don't have that thermal climb situation that everybody talks about with lakes and streams where it gets cold and then the temperature comes to a certain degree and that kicks off a certain hatch which kicks off a certain feeding of a fish relative to a spawning phase all out the window here every two to three days something's hatching they really are primeval prehistoric uh, they relate directly back to some of the earliest fish uh, from those prehistoric periods with the long noses and teeth Mm. And here a beautiful little sun bass. We caught about a dozen then these. we went to a little shack not far away and asked if he could provide us with a meal. And for a, a very reasonable sum, he produced this wonderful big bag of shrimp and crab and sweet corn and potatoes with some special uh, spicy sauces. And here's our finished painting, produced in about 20 to 30 minutes, on site, straight off. It's a very satisfying thing to do. This area of Florida that I was visiting and painting in is famous for its horses and stud farms. There's a lot of money there, as you can see even by this short drive to visit um, one of the stud farms. A demonstration of painting this particular horse, this grey. Here we have some dappled light shining across it that I will actually attempt to put a little bit of into the painting as well, as it's rather pretty. Let's move out to the racetrack now and see the horses in motion. 
it could well be worth your while to put still shot onto these individual uh, studies I've done here and try to draw some of these horses in movement just to get the idea of how a horse actually gallops or moves and you'll understand the, the animal more so your drawings will be more correct. That's probably enough just to get me going, just to loosen up. If we're painting a lively subject matter such as a moving animal or water then we need to use a fairly lively technique. Obviously if the horse is going to stand statuesque and still we can treat that in that sort of way but if you want to show movement then you need a technique which has plenty of movement in it. Now then, let's move on to Savannah, shall we, and see what I used to paint over there. I've been invited to Savannah twice, thoroughly enjoyed it. In my first visit I was introduced to Skidaway Wildlife Park and the wonderful nature and animals and insects that inhabited it, became very friendly with the ranger who was ever so helpful and found some wonderful places to paint. My second visit was an invitation by Savannah University to be their artist in residence. The whole town is surrounded by marshland, which provides a wonderful habitat for so many wonderful birds. Very many sorts of birds, spoonbills, it was amazing. And we were even very lucky to see the painted bunting. The park warden invited me to do some illustrations for them. And here are two pages of watercolours from the photographs you've just seen and more that were done for the architecture was wonderful and it was like stepping back in time, very colonial. But also the interiors of many buildings were lovely. Two of the first paintings I did were this watercolour of Mr Sherman, my friend's father, with rather lovely backlighting, and also their Jack Russell Terrier called Ziggy. This particular building is called the Gingerbread House, highly ornate and must have been painted by almost every artist in Savannah. But all the paintings I saw treated it as a very decorative object that was cast over the roadway. This is a 2430 oil, so it's quite large and was painted outdoors in about four hours. Crab Shack is a restaurant on the edge of the marshes where you can sit down in these lovely lush surroundings and have about five varieties of crabs and all sorts of wonderful local delicacies and shrimp and potatoes and spicy sausages. Some more friends invited me to do a pastel painting of the view from their front yard. This gives me full control and I can work up and compare large areas and blocks of colour and finish into detail to use very I strong opposites in colour of the colour circle, purples and yellows, to get this feeling of the intense sunlight, this white heron taking off with the sunlight showing through the wings. This sunset in pastel was painted one evening as a part of two, one watercolour and one pastel, as the sun came down, in situ, so you have to work very, very quickly. Just off one of the footpaths in Skidaway Park is this lovely alligator pond, deep and dark and murky, with the tannin from all the oak trees making it very black. A lovely place to take my class at the time to paint. It was springtime and there was an abundance of the most gorgeous as an example of where you would leave out what you wanted to leave out and painted what you want to paint. You don't have to in paintings put everything in. You're the artist, you can choose. With oils, uh, with mid-tones and gradually working up this strong. Look how it just explodes out to you and becomes and just by painting the right colours in the right places you get and texture as you want when you wish. You are in control and it's not so frightening. Well, that's the end of our trip to America. I do hope you enjoyed sharing it as much as I did.